And now it's just myself versus Fernando Alonso. The fight that's been there for most of this season, to be honest, between us. As there's still some great racing going on behind between the Andrettis and the Red Bulls. But we're within one second of Alonso. This is our time. We've got a strike whilst the iron's hot. Our tyres are rubbered in. Alonso's maybe not so much as there's a spin. Is that going to be another safety car? Ocon is span. I think... Oh, he spun right in front of Alonso. What just happened? Alonso's out. We've crashed into him. Five second penalty. Alonso. Alonso's out. Verstappen and Dragovic. There's still a fight between them two. Verstappen with a desperate dive down the inside. I think it might be all over for us. The two of them now with a drag race to the next left-hander. Surely Drogovic is in the better position. Verstappen still tries it. Round the outside, but the Brazilian is going to hold through for P1. And maybe the championship win. No, Verstappen goes wide and lets us through into P2. And this changes everything. So by one point, I think we've got this. Miracles do happen. Verstappen going wide has just given us our second world championship. The landscape of Formula One is all set to change with the six-time world champion Sebastian Vettel retiring from the sport and has announced he will be starting his own team in Formula One, heading up as the team principal. Vesta's Vettel Rennsport will take the place of the Enstone outfit at Alpine and take their place on the grid. Their driver lineup has yet to be confirmed, but Vettel did state his year as the team principal driver at Arrow of Archer Racing last season has given him all the wealth of experience he needs to head his own team. And straight off the bat, he has promised his team will be net zero carbon neutral from the get-go as the team will embody Sebastian's own beliefs about where the sport should be heading. Alongside this news, of course, was confirmation that Arava will be returning to his own team, Arrow of Archer Racing, as the reigning double world champion now in Formula 1 looking to chase after a third title. But competition will be stiff as we step into the unknown in Formula 1. For the first time in two seasons, we have a major regulation change that has been announced. Aerodynamic chassis and durability have all been reset and who knows who is going to come out on top and look the best coming out of the winter break. For now though, that's all the latest news in this special report for Formula 1. Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is pre-season for Season 7, and my, oh my, is this a massive episode and season upcoming. It's going to feel so amazing being back at our own team, Arava Archer Racing, after taking a season out to drive for Scuderia Ferrari. We did the job that they signed us to do for one season. We brought two trophies to Maranello in terms of my second Drivers World Championship and a Constructors title to the Italian outfit for the first time in a long, long while. But now it's time to get back into our own skin, as it were, and return to our own team and actually, you know, for the sake of the series name, manage my team. And we've got some pretty big decisions to make because on the return to my own team, of course, Sebastian Vettel was the temporary team principal here at this team last season. He is now retired out of Formula 1 and a little later all will be revealed about his brand new team. So even though he's not racing as a driver anymore, I will still probably be able to go up against Sebastian Vettel, team principal versus team principal. The only difference is I'm still driving, but I'm happy that in some shape or form we get to continue this almost poetic little story line of having a great rivalry relationship with Sebastian Vettel in this career mode series. But having beaten him in the final race on the last lap of the Grand Prix to take my second title, you can probably understand why Felipe Dragovic as well did not want to stick around in our team, licking his wounds and going elsewhere. So we have a big decision to make. Who are we going to sign as our brand new teammate into this all new era of F1? 
with a large regulation change. Well, we've had a habit of convincing drivers to come out of retirement. And along those same lines, I'm happy to confirm we courted Lewis Hamilton to return to Formula One. He hasn't driven in this series since season two, where he won the world championship and became an eight time world champion in this alternate F1 universe of ours. We have convinced him to return to the sport and partner us in an all British lineup. So we may have lost a six time world champion on this grid, but we're gaining back an eight time world champion. And I'm really Really hoping Lewis is going to push us. We're going to push him. And I'm really excited to see the dynamic inside this team. And we're going to be pushing each other around a 16 race calendar, which looks slightly different for season seven from the past two seasons. We do start in the usual down under Australian Grand Prix location, then to Bahrain. We go to Miami across the pond for an American Grand Prix early on in the season. We then go down to Mexico, to have Mexico as an early round in this season. We then have the traditional European portion of the calendar from Monaco, Austria, Silverstone, Azerbaijan returns to the calendar for round eight. Belgium, the double header of the two Italian Grand Prix, the Singapore GP, a flyaway to Canada, down to Brazil, and then rounding off with our usual epic ending of Jeddah and then Yas Marina to round out round Round number 16. And unlike the past two seasons, we have a regulation change and the pecking order is dramatically different. Have a look at this. This is the R&D chart now going into this season. Audi reigns supreme according to this chart at the top with Repsol Haas in second place in the pecking order on paper. Golf Porsche Williams in the top three and Vettel Rennsport. Sebastian Vettel's brand new Formula One team is coming in. They've done their homework and they're P4 on the pecking order ahead of Mercedes and Red Bull who will welcome a bit of uptick of performance potentially through the winter break as they had a really slow and quiet season last year. We at Hour of Archer Racing do come in a little bit low from the lofty heights we were at for the last two seasons but we have plenty of R&D points that we've saved up to up the car early on in the season. The second American team in the sport, Andretti Honda, close behind us. And then look at the bottom three. This is a shock. Aston Martin, Ferrari and McLaren are the bottom three teams. Aston and Ferrari have gone from competing for the Drivers and Constructors World Championships last season to being in the bottom three of the grid. McLaren, a team that usually on the F1 games is always is up there as a championship contender. They've slumped to the back marker, slowest team on the grid position. This is unbelievable. I, I actually haven't seen a regulation change that's mixed it up this much. I did not think Aston and Ferrari were going to take such a nosedive. At the same time, you do need to remember the performance index here on the R&D chart is very scaled and zoomed in. So in reality, it's still going to be a very close grid spread. But the fact that you've got Aston and Ferrari down there at the bottom... Audi, Haas, Williams, Vettel, Rennsport up there in the top four. Unbelievable. What an utterly different landscape this is going to be. This really opens up the door for some new challenges for race wins, podiums, and I cannot wait. So that's how all the different teams stack up performance-wise to each other. We've seen the brand new calendar for Season 7, and now it's time to reveal what your driver's grid looks like for Season 7 of this F122 my team career mode starting off of course with our team Arava Archer Racing myself alongside Lewis Hamilton like was the case last season with Arava Archer Racing whilst I wasn't even driving for the team we have returned to our original color scheme the very first color scheme that you guys the viewers voted for when we started this whole career mode last summer when this game came out the cream white red and black 
black paintwork, but we've got an all new chassis to put it on. And I think on the new chassis shape, it looks pretty darn mean. Along with it, some familiar sponsors that have been with this team for the whole series, like Jordan. We've adopted Shell as a sponsor from my time at Ferrari. Martini returns to the team as a secondary sponsor on the front wing and rear wing. And you may notice as well, we've got a few sponsors from Lewis Hamilton, namely Mission 44 and Police on the front wing. And as the main sponsor on our overalls and the front wing end plates is AAR, my second channel for IRL F1 content. So little cheeky plug here, there'll be a link down below in the description. Go check out my second channel if you've ever wanted IRL based F1 content from myself. We've got a couple of videos already there and we upload weekly videos deep diving into F1 topics. Next we come to the team looking the best at the blocks after winter testing. Audi Sport with Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz retaining their positions at the team. The Carlando duo, they've worked well. I mean, Sainz has had a bit of a rocky time last season, but Lando Norris really came into his own, won the British Grand Prix, and looked like a driver that was really frustrating the rest of us in the title fight. And for the first time in a couple of seasons, this Audi Sport team has an all-new look with a brand new chassis owing to the regulation changes and it certainly worked for them as they are top of the R&D chart. Of course myself and Audi, we've had a history in this series. We tried to go for world championships with them. Didn't exactly work out for us. But Sebastian Vettel was able to win his two extra world championships in this series with Audi. So they're no stranger to success in this My Team Career Mode universe of ours on this game and they're looking to try and be finally back at this shot end going for another world championship with either of these drivers and they're both highly focused and highly rated. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with. But a team they're going to have to come up against is now owned and run by that former world champion that had so much success with them. This is Vettel Rensport. Sebastian Vettel has his own team in Formula 1 now and he's taken Felipe Drogovic, his past teammate last season with him to be a driver for his brand new team. And alongside Felipe Drogovic is Sebastian Vettel's family friend and protege, Mick Schumacher. After having flashes of speed and success with the Gulf Porsche Williams team, he's gone across to the new German team to drive for his mentor. And they've certainly put in the work over the winter being P4 in the R&D standing. So this is going to be an amazingly exciting team. Dragovic just lost out to a Drivers World Championship. Mick Schumacher has been going from strength to strength through this series and last season finally looked like he maybe is capable of getting multiple podiums, going for race wins with the right machinery and now under the tutelage of a brand new team principal of Sebastian Vettel, this could be a really, really exciting team. Welcome, once again I say, to Vestas Vettel Rensport. But the excitement on this grid does not stop there, because of course Mick Schumacher departed the very strong Golf Porsche Williams team, who now sit third place in the R&D standings, still sponsored by Golf and partnering with Porsche. Williams have managed to lure away Charles Leclerc, after so many seasons of disappointment at Ferrari and indeed Mercedes even alongside George Russell in the past two seasons. Leclerc has taken a risk in his career and joined Williams, a once backmarker team in this series, now in the top three in the R&D performance alongside Magnussen, who's been a loyal subject for them. Golf Porsche Williams, the sky's the limit. They look so quick at times 
very quick on a Saturday. They still need to sort out their race strategies at time and their decision making. But maybe Leclerc is the man to do that for them, to steer them in the right direction and lead them towards some former glory for the Williams outfit and some new glory for brands like Porsche in Formula One. Leclerc jumping ship from Mercedes though did leave a gaping hole in the Silver Arrows drive lineup and they've had to resort to signing and stealing away Alexander Albon from the Red Bull family to partner George Russell. These two are friends in real life so the partnership may work out for them and the Silver Arrows have returned to silver for this season and have gone back with their old sponsor Patronus. A return to familiarity and they'll be hoping that is going to be the sign of a return to their former glory. It's not going to be easy though. They've had a really tough time. They've not looked consistent. Both Russell and Albon very low focus especially Albon from a very tough few years at Red Bull and Russell as well not achieving what he's wanted to so both their drivers and the team itself have a lot to do to dig in deep and try and recover and steer themselves back to some former glory. Moving on to Repsol Haas, one of the fan favourites, I guess, in this series that's turned into a top team and looks like they've catapulted themselves back into maybe the frame for a championship or race wins and podiums at least by being the second best on the R&D grid. They had a bit of a quieter time last season, but they'll be looking to try and recreate some of their form from the previous seasons of season four and five. Their previous lead driver Valtteri Bottas was another driver who retired out of Formula 1 which left them with a massive hole to fill and they have chosen the services of Oscar Piastri to lead them into this new era for them in the sport alongside Nico Hülkenberg who completes his real life transfer to the American outfit. Piastri frustrated with how things were going at McLaren in the shadow of Pierre Gasly wanted to form his own lead leadership and make his mark in a team and he can do just that in reps or has Hulkenberg was okay for Aston Martin I think last season he had a few really good races especially towards the end of the season but he'll just be there for the experience that he can offer this team and as a really good second driver to Oscar Piastri and looking at the R&D chart to be honest maybe Piastri's made the best driver transfer of the entire season because his old team McLaren sit at the bottom of the R&D chart they're set to start off the season as the worst team on the grid as the back markers so to say even in this close close tight-knit grid still led by the Frenchman Pierre Gasly. It's an all-French lineup, though, as they've been forced to dip into the pool of younger drivers and sign Theo Porcher, who, to be fair, is highly focused and is actually quite good rated from his previous experience in Formula One, of course. He was actually a main driver on the grid for a season or two beforehand in this series. So both of them do have potential, but Gasly being so out of focus and maybe unmotivated, and with the car being the slowest on the grid it's going to be a tough time for the papaya outfits a team that's gone through some tough times in previous seasons has been the red bull racing team now red bull ford since last season they retain their partnership and engine manufacturer of the american brand ford and they have signed their old star daniel ricardo he has returned home to where it all began at red bull he's highly focused on after a really successful season actually at Andretti by scoring some good points late on at the end of last season. You know, you would have seen at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and the previous ones, Andretti did pick up some silently good points there and Ricardo was really reinvigorated by that and so sees maybe now a move back to Red Bull as his time to shine. Red Bull do look to be in a better nick in terms of the R&D chart now this season, so maybe Red Bull Bull and Ford will have a bit more success than they had last season. Alongside him is Liam Lawson, a junior Red Bull driver, of course, previously in his career. So it's all Red Bull in the Red Bull family for this team, hoping just to turn the tide from a very slow season last year. But speaking of Ricardo's old team, 
Andretti Honda. Well, Andretti and Red Bull were locked into a battle at the end of last season on track. And that might happen again as Andretti is not too far off them. And they are slowly picking up the pace and getting more experience as a team in Formula 1. Sonoda leads the way for them and he'll be a wealth of experience for them. But a very hungry young American has come in. Logan Sargent now drives for the American team as the only American on the grid. They'll be hoping that will be more than just a marketing opportunity and that he could help Sonoda push Andretti a bit further up and try and emulate what their brothers Repsol Haas have done in this series by becoming one of the top teams in Formula 1. And now finally we come to the last two teams on the grid and two of the bottom three teams on the R&D chart. Where has it all gone wrong for Scuderia Ferrari? We leave the team and they immediately plummet in performance. It's going to be one of those real cold winter years for Ferrari. They go through this, they have a bit of success and then immediately the next year they're really on the back foot and it is more than a back foot. They're going to be in the bottom half of the table. Verstappen still remaining loyal with them. He did get oh so close to a Drivers World Championship to be fair to make it title number three for him last season. So you can't fault his loyalty, but uh, in terms of driver moves, he maybe now wishes he did move away. He partners Robert Schwartzman with the gap obviously left by myself. Schwartzman used to be in the Ferrari Academy. He did drive for Epsil Haas in the previous seasons before, so it makes sense for them to sign him alongside Verstappen to keep it in the Ferrari DNA in terms of their drivers. And now we come to Aston Martin. Fernando Alonso remains at the team and he's now partnered by Sergio Perez. The team were hoping to sign a second driver who can maybe help him out more in the Constructors' Championship compared to Hulkenberg last season. But annoyingly for them, for Fernando, it won't matter because Aston Martin don't seem to have the performance to match what they did last season. Fernando had a standout breakout season last season to be in the championship fight. This season, it's all come crashing down. Aston Martin Martin relegated to once again maybe being at the back. You never know though with the money, the funding they have, maybe they can push on and make a recovery but Alonso will be ruining now even more so than ever that lead crash that he had at Abu Dhabi. A chance to win a third world championship taken away from him by a former teammate at Alpine in the form of Esteban Ocon. Uh, yeah, it won't matter that Perez is alongside him because the team may not be scoring too many points as a whole anyway with the performance they have but who knows things can change over a season and you know Alonso will try and drag that car up as high as he can as ever. I want to give a massive shout out to Jamie G18 Designs who worked with me to custom make though this Vettel Rensport livery you see for the upcoming season 7 fantastic work. He's the same designer who I worked with for the Repsol Haas livery that we've had for a lot of this series so definitely go check him out links down below to his socials and also links below to every other livery that I've gotten off race department all made by some brilliant brilliant designers so go give them some love check out their designs if you want to use them yourself in your F1 games or even commission them to make your own designs in the future but that is then us coming to the end of this pre-season episode that is the full grid of drivers for this upcoming season all new regulation changes changing up the pecking order some very exciting driver transfers and team stories Sebastian Vettel is now a team principal with his own team on this grid. Lewis Hamilton, an eight-time world champion in this alternate F1 universe, returns to the grid and we have some really new brands right at the top of F1 and some new brands at the bottom of Formula 1. Guys, if you have enjoyed this pre-season video, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you make of that all. Are you excited for this brand new season? What do you make of Vettel Ren Sport? What do you make of all the driver transfers? And who do you reckon is going to be a favourite at the start of this season. Let me
me know in the comments below. And if you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll catch you guys next time tomorrow for round one of season seven of this F122 My Team Karima. Till then, I've been Josh today, guys. Goodbye.